anthropologist who searches for early human remains in Africa. And this is Pavlina's Kids Place. Enjoy the show. Hey everyone, this is Pavlina from Pavlina's Kids Place. I'm at Rollins College with paleoanthropologist, founding director of the Institution of Human uh, Origins and author, Dr. Donald Johansson. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm just great in this beautiful weather to be here in Florida. It's lovely. Awesome, that's great. So did you always want to, you know, find and discover things? I did. As a young boy, I was very interested in the, the biological world, collecting mm -hmm. butterflies and rocks and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And I read a book called Man's Place in Nature. Mm -hmm. And I got very interested in the idea that we and chimpanzees were closely related to one another. Definitely. And they must have had a common ancestor, and those early ancestors must have lived in Africa. And yeah. I wanted to go to Africa and find something. <laughs> Yes, definitely. That's awesome. So um, growing up, kids have all kinds of obstacles. What kind of obstacles did you have, and how did you overcome or deal with them? Well, my biggest obstacle was that my dad died when I was two years old, oh, wow. and I didn't have someone to raise me, but I met an anthropologist when I was okay. nine years old wow. in Connecticut, mm -hmm. and he became my surrogate father, and he, was, he had a library, a wonderful library about Africa, and he let me use that library and introduced me to this study of anthropology. Yes. Wow, that's great. So, um, in 1974, you found uh, Lucy in Ethiopia. So, uh, do you still go back to that site? Oh, yes. I was just in Ethiopia in November. Oh, wow. Uh, nice. Our expeditions are continuing. We continue to find bones, not as complete as Lucy. Lucy is a unique ancestor. Mm -hmm. But we are continuing to find fossils, and we have expeditions there every couple of years. Awesome. That's great. So, what goes through your mind while you're over there? Well, what goes through my mind is that I'd love to find something even better than Lucy, but here it's Lucy was found way back in 1974 yes. and I've never found anything better. They're very hard to find, yes. but I'm always interested in even the tiniest fragments that are found that tell us more and more about our ancestors. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay. So um, how is Lucy, you know, like a really big deal? Like what made her so special? Well, Lucy was uh, about 40% complete. Oh, wow. She was about three and a half feet tall. She was an adult because her adult teeth okay. have been erupted. Uh, she was a new species of human, a real tongue twister, Australopithecus afarensis, and she was a real link between more ape-like ancient ancestors and more human-like more recent ancestors. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's really cool then. And she was, was 3.2 million years old. Really? Wow. Can you imagine? Yeah, definitely. That's great. Did you know anything existed before Lucy? Oh yes, there were lots of fossils from South Africa in particular, but also from the Great Rift Valley in East Africa where I work. Mm -hmm. But nothing as old and com as complete as this. Okay. And she was upright walking like you and I. We get When we stand up, we walk on two legs. That makes us very unique among mammals, right? Yes. Other mammals don't do that. Every mammal we know walks on four legs. Yes. But she had still a very small brain like an ape okay. and a very projecting face like an ape. Wow, that's great. How much do you know about Lucy? Like, do you know how she died? We don't know how she died. We know that she was living near a lake. Mm -hmm. There's one little puncture mark in her pelvis. Okay. Maybe she came down to the lake to collect crocodile eggs or turtle eggs. Mm -hmm. And unbeknownst to her, there was a crocodile waiting. Yeah. And a crocodile may have dragged her into the lake. But oh, wow. we really don't know exactly how she died. But I'm sure glad she died near water, yes. where she would fall into the water and turn into a fossil and wait 3.2 million years to be discovered. Awesome. That's great. That's really cool. So um, I usually don't know too much about uh, your job, and like I usually think it's about you know uh, staying in one place, teaching, working, um, and looking around for old things. But you're kind of like an Indiana Jones. So is it tough to be you? Well, it, it's very tough out there. Every day temperatures are 100 degrees or more. You're in the middle of the desert. There's there's certainly no corner drugstore nearby. You have to bring everything you need with you. There are dangers like snakes and marauding lions. Uh, it's very hot and very desolate and far away from everywhere. But it is so wonderful to be out there, to know that you're digging into the past record of all humanity. It's a great reward. Yeah, I know you said you like to work um, in the fields, but like what is like the difference between teaching and giving lectures? Well, teaching is really translating mm -hmm. for students and for public audiences yeah. uh, the details of my science in a way that they can understand what I do and why it is so important to understand who we are and how we fit into the natural world. Yes, definitely. That's great. So science has changed a lot over the years. Um, you know, like chemical uh, cases like 40 years ago would have been benefited with DNA testings. Is there anything that science has helped you out? 
Well, certainly uh, all of the scanning techniques that we have now, mm -hmm. uh, MRIs and CAT scans yeah. and so on, yeah. allow us to look inside the bones. Before, we were always looking at the outsides of bones. Yeah. But now we can look at the anatomy of in, the insides of skulls, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of advance in terms of imaging, but DNA has also played a role. Some of my colleagues in Europe can now look at the DNA of Neanderthals, wow. who lived as much as 60,000 years ago, yeah. and see how their DNA differed and was like ours. Yeah, that's great. Okay, and you also have hobbits, so what is that? Oh, these are these little fossils from uh, Indonesia. Oh. They were only about three and a half feet tall. They had small brains. They were probably a very early group of human ancestors that got out of Africa and got isolated on an island called Flores and have evolved there for perhaps two million years, independent of the rest of the world. That's great. That's really cool because I like um, Lord of the Rings, so sure. it's cool. Definitely. So uh, what are your upcoming plans? My upcoming plans are to continue with research in Africa, to continue publishing on all of these uh, discoveries, and uh, maybe perhaps to look beyond Ethiopia, to look at yeah. other places that might have important fossils also, and of course to continue to travel and lecture about a subject that I love so dearly. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. You're very welcome. Thank you.